stick to the plan. What plan? We black men, there ain't nowhere safe. Come on, let's take a drive. All right, so now we have Superfly, a remake of a 1972 film of the same name. Is it better? Is it worse? Let's find out. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Superfly. I really do appreciate it. Now, this film here kind of snuck up on me. I didn't know it was coming out a year ago, six months ago, just up until um, a little over a month ago, maybe two months ago. And I, you know, said Superfly. And I'm like, Superfly, was that the, you know, the original film that I heard about? Like, came out like in the, in the uh, late 70s, early 70s, something like that. And it turned out to be true. Now, I've always heard about this film, Superfly. A lot of people have talked about it uh, coming up, but I never have seen it. So just to let you know about this review of Pain of Mine, uh, I cannot relate it to the uh, the first film, but I do plan on seeing it. And um, I am interested in seeing the original film and how it compares to this one, especially after seeing this one. Now, um, this is an action crime thriller. It is uh, not a real movie. I mean, not based on a true story or anything like that. Um, the director is Director X, somebody that I've really never heard of before. Uh, but when I look at the filmography, this gentleman has, he's a, a music video director. And he has a lot of credits under his name, like Kendrick Lamar, uh, who we got, Rihanna, T.I., Iggy Azalea, I mean, Drake, Busta Rhymes, Sierra, you know, the list goes on. And at a point in time in the film, you know, the, it did kind of feel like a music video. And I don't mean that as a knock, I mean that as, you know, a positive thing. You know, something that just kind of felt familiar to me as me growing up watching music videos where, you know, women are twerking or guys are throwing money in the air, making it rain. And I'll touch on that point right there um, in just a moment. So um, my expectations going into this film, I was kind of conflicted because at one point, you know, I would just kind of stand on myself. OK, you know, is this one of those movies to where. You know, it is shining black people in a bad light, you know, with stereotypes that, you know, we're ignorant and, you know, black on black crime and, um, you know, just how black people or the stereotype that we just care about uh, cash and material things and, you know, things like that. I, I just didn't know, but I'm not going to judge a book by its cover. I know if I would have had a conversation like this uh, with a friend of mine that I went to go see, well, no, we didn't see it together. We, we had a conversation about the movie, um, girl, was it, uh, girl, was it the, was it the, the movie where all the four women, uh, went on the vacation last year, black women, it was Jada Pinkett, uh, Queen Latifah, Tiffany Haddish, and, um, I can't remember the, the fourth person. Well, Right, girls trip you know what i'm talking about girls trip you know i had a strong opinion about that movie because i just didn't really care for you know black women being portrayed as sex objects that's how i went into the film uh it, it, it that's not how it turned out this is kind of how i went into the film and uh my friend you know they uh really didn't care for my opinion and you know we did exchange some words, nothing heated or anything like that. But I know if I would have talked to him about Superfly, they would just be like, well, no, Brandon, slow your roll. You know, black people. Sorry for hitting the mic. Uh, black people, you know, we're people, too. You know, we can play every role as well. You know, they got Scarface. You know, that ain't with black people about drugs and departed and things like that. So I just have to set this up and kind of let you know my mindset of going into this movie. Um, and also, before I saw the film, there was another video on YouTube of a gentleman on a title that said, everybody boycott Superfly. And I'm like, OK, you know, what is this? This is clickbaity. It's going to gain my interest, makes me want to click it and see what this dude is talking about. And he had a decent amount of subscribers, but more than me. I think he had around twenty five thousand, uh, maybe five thousand, but it, it was above five thousand. And I know it, it was above me. It's about a 25 minute video. I would listen to about half of it. And basically he was like, man, Hollywood, uh, Hollywood, they always trying to paint black people as bad and this and that. And, you know, um, while that has definitely been true in the past, off the top of my head, I was just kind of saying to myself, OK, well, lately, and I think, you know, they've been doing a decent job. I'm not just going to pat them on the back. But, you know, I didn't listen to the whole video. So when I was going into this movie, 
or what if I had all this weight on my shoulder and all these preconceived notions and expectations and thinking that it was just going to be this, it was just going to be that, you know, and that's really not how you should go into a film. You know, you should just go in with an open mind. And I, I, I tried that. And, you know, when I, uh, I, I think I missed like the first 30 seconds, it was a long story, you know, but when I got in, and I saw the actors on the screen. The first person I saw was Priest or whatever, the main character being played by, uh, what's his name? Trevor Jackson, a young brother. Uh, he's known for Grownish and uh, Blackish and also Burning Sands, I think. And the dude's only 21 years old. But this dude, Trevor, Trevor Jackson, is a phenomenal actor. I was very surprised because when I just see him in the trailer and he talking about this and that and crypto and he at the top of his game, you know, that's another thing that the trailers was promoting cryptocurrency. And, you know, I'm not I'm not in that game right now, so I just can't come to any conclusion on, on the validity of it or whatever. But I do know that, uh, you know, sometime last year, you know, a lot of people got upset and, you know, uh, but that's just another subject. But uh, I noticed that Trevor Jackson, I was like, man, you know, this guy Priest, he's he's really doing good on screen right now. Like, I am convinced, you know, uh, I feel him. I, I'm not saying that I can necessarily relate to him. There's other characters I can relate to, but, you know, uh, he was believable on screen. Not just the stereotypical, um, you know, uh, casting that I thought that his role of this movie was going to be. Uh, just somebody that's just ignorant, dumb, just cares about, you know, the short game instead of the long game, you know, just trying to get this money, just trying to get these holes and blah, 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 blah. His character was exactly the opposite of that or whatever. And it immediately just kind of sucked me into the film to where I just kind of wanted to know more and more about this guy and how he did become on the top of the game. You know what I'm saying? What made him so different from all the other drug dealers or drug pushers, you know, in the universe of this movie and other films as well that has to do with, you know, people selling cocaine and things like that. And that's the main plot of the film is that, you know, um, his name is Priest or young blood priest i don't remember that's what it says right here i don't remember that in the movie i remember them calling him priest but it just it was just about him you know at the top of his game selling cocaine and um you know he was very humble and you know he just decided like look man you know no one in this game uh is alive at a, at a late age they either uh end up dead or in jail i want to get out and that, you know he just wants to score one big one big score so he can get out forever and you know just kind of relax parlay and enjoy um his millions with his women or women or whatever you know and of course we've seen films like this before guys but it's always about execution how do you get from a to b is what makes it very interesting and this story is very interesting starting with trevor jackson another actor in this movie that you know stole the show was jason mitchell who played eddie his best friend they're kind of part uh kind of partners in this movie uh, Jason Mitchell, he was in King Kong, and of course, you know, he popped on the scene with me with uh, Straight Outta Compton, which came out, I think, uh, 2015. If I got the date year wrong, let me know down in the comment section below, of course, directed by F. Gary Gray. I love these two gentlemen on screen. You know, that was great. They, they both connect. We knew Jason Mitchell connect, but now Jason Mitchell and Trevor Jackson, um, you know, I know can act too. He will definitely be on my radar. And actually this morning, this is Wednesday evening that I'm filming this review right now. I saw the film Monday night. I was listening to an interview of these two on The Breakfast Club uh, with Charlemagne the God and uh, my goodness gracious, Angela. I forgot their names, whatever, but my, my bad. No disrespect, Breakfast Club. And, uh, you know, that's when I first found out that Trevor Jackson was 21. And, um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm actually a fan now, not just because of the movie, uh, but also the interview with the Breakfast Club as well. You guys can go check that out. Uh, another actor in this movie that did a great job was Michael Kenneth Williams. Uh, this is, uh, you know, um, he's known from The Wire. His name was Scatter. He is kind of like uh, Priest's mentor or whatever. And the relationship that they had was dope. I really did like that. It felt real. It felt genuine. Um, you know, I can compare their relationship literally to somebody, um, you know, in my life that I have a relationship with that's very close to me or whatever. And that, it just really spoke to me. You know, especially there's like a little, I'll go ahead and give you a little flavor of this. There's like a little martial arts that goes on between them two, you know, and I love that. And me personally, if you know me, I'm a martial arts fan. 
And, uh, you know, it, it's just, you know, early on in this film, just really, it was just the characters and the relationships in between them and how they're interacting, you know, was great. Um, I mean, that may not blow you away, but me going in thinking that this movie was going to be kind of sour in a sense, you know, I, I was very impressed um, with what I was getting. Um, and it just goes back back to, you know, there, there's other cameos in, in um, you know, in this film as well. I'm not going to go down the whole cast list or whatever, especially for one that I'm looking at right now. But um, the film had like a very mature sense to it or whatever. I mean, you had your it, you, you had your characters from all different types of groups. You, you know, you had your, your black people over here that had some sense. And then you had a group of ignorant black people over here. We're just going to call them snowbirds like that was kind of the movie. You know, they just look ridiculous. You had your cartel. You had your corrupt cops, you know, uh, white corrupt cops, too. So, you know, you had your black characters, your Hispanic characters, your white characters, you know, everybody doing their thing. Um and what I like about what I just really like about it is how the film focused on Trevor Jackson, his character, uh, young blood priest, and just his philosophy on everything. The dude was not flashy. He was not trying to be, you know, he was just chill with it. You know what I'm saying? Calm, collected, always scoping the scene, always just trying to make sure that a thread and a sweater did not come out because he knew that just one little mistake in his whole game would just destroy his empire. That's just what I loved about him. It, he was a product of his environment. I don't like to judge people and just like, you know, somebody selling drugs, they're just a piece of shit. You know, I'm not going to, if you're selling drugs to kids and things like that, but you don't know what people go through when they grow up and how they were taught and, you know, what they were lacking and things like that. And literally sometimes people are just trying to survive. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, like if, if you go in the store and you're stealing food, okay, you know, you can say you're a thief, but hey, if you're stealing food because you literally don't have a penny to your name and you got babies in the car and if you don't feed them, then they're going to die. Okay, I mean, you're just trying to survive, you know what I'm saying? And they didn't dive that, de they didn't dive that deep into his backstory, but they did enough for me to just be like, you know, hey, man, I, I kind of understand where you're coming from. You know, they were talking about, you know, black men growing up in America and, you know, the conditioning that that does to black people especially from a young age it is profound and multifaceted i mean these are just kind of the things that were just going on through my head not saying that this is like the best movie in the world like oh my god it just took my breath away no i'm not saying that but i mean these are just the emotions that i felt you know hey all films are um subjective but i really did like his character and just how humble he was and that he just did not care about material things that you know he wasn't the stereotypical black man the stereotypical drug pusher the stereotypical rapper or whatever they had that in this movie but the, the film did uh made a made a strong point to make sure that he was not you know those labels were not uh put on him but they still had that in the rest of the film and i kind of like that because it reminds me of another film that spike lee did last no, not last year. I think two years ago, Chirac or whatever talked about all the the uh, the violence in Chicago, which is funny. But you know, it's interesting to me in the news how they always just talk about Chicago, but they don't want to talk about all the other groups and those cities and how the crime is and how it's kind of similar, you know. But anyway, we can talk about that in another video. But anyway. In Chirac, you know, it was talking about all the, the ignorance and the killing in Chicago. And they really did in that film make a point to show you how stupid some people look in this film and in the real world that try to live this hard, you know, too hard for yourself in the streets lifestyle. You know, if you're in the streets and you're doing your thing, I'm not judging you, but some people, not all, just take it too far. And they just, you know, want to go around busting the heads or whatever because, you know, they mad because they can't get a girl or something like that. And you had the you had those characters in this movie in Chirac and in uh, Superfly and in that movie, especially with uh, Wesley Snipes character and Chirac do had a patch on it. It was just brilliant to me how Spike Lee made him look stupid in that film. Like, hey, all you ignoramuses out there that are in the streets, you know, I'm not talking about everybody in the streets. I'm just talking about people that just do senseless shit. This is how dumb y'all look, okay? So you can either stop it or look, look, and keep looking stupid. And the film was able to do that as well. I mean, just kind of some beef started out of nowhere with Priest. And another thing why I like Priest is, you know, he not just, if somebody just say something crazy to him, he not just going to pop off and clap back or whatever and bah, 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 and just, you know, re recover. He was like, nah, you know, you ain't even worth it. I'm going to walk away. You know, I like that about his character, but you still had these knuckleheads, you know, um, in this film. So, you know, that's that. Um, as far as the story is concerned, like I gave you a brief synopsis, he's trying to get out the game. And I liked uh, I liked majority of it. I liked the way that it was going with it. I liked how 
the plot thickened. Um, I like how the sense of the cartel and, you know, um, and Michael Kenneth Williams character scatter. I liked all of that and just kind of, you know, you just kind of dive into the underground life of Atlanta and just kind of seeing how they move things around. And, you know, they had a nice little montage in there showing, you know, the transition of time and how far their empire is and spreading out. You know, I was just really, uh, I was really feeling all that. And, um, let me see here before I, oh, okay. So let me go ahead and get to the end of this right here. This review, the film was great. Um, up until the third act. Now, when the third act came, the tone just completely switched to me. It went from a serious, a semi-serious film that I respect was saying to myself, I'm definitely going to be buying this on Blu-ray. And then the film in the third act did turn into that stereotype of a film that I was worried about. I'm just saying like, okay, you didn't have to have a shootout. You didn't have to have a car chase. And I mean, if you're going to do it, that's fine. But it's, it all comes down to execution. It didn't ruin the film for me, but I, I did kind of just say like, you know, man, you know, and it, it's, it's not like I don't mind, you know, having shootouts in movies and stuff like that. I mean, Bad Boys 2 is one of the dopest movies shootouts to me just like ever. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the reasons why Michael Bay uh, was my favorite director. And if uh, check out my Dumbo trailer reaction because I talked about that. I'm, I thought I was talking about the same little thing here, but I'm combining uh, opinions and videos or whatever. But uh, I don't mind that But because I don't want to spoil it. But th just the third act really just turned into like a, a, a cartoon to me. Just something that, you know, like a slapstick, stupid you know, uh, moving in. I don't know why that was necessary. I, I really feel like that was studio involvement just because director X, he was just the tone and flow of the film was just so nice to me from beginning until, and then they just kind of completely like, all right, we got to have a BS in there. You know and I'm just like? You know, okay. And then again, like when, you know, you have your protagonist, which is Eddie and you have your protagonist, which is a uh, priest or whatever. And then you have your antagonist or whatever, you know, how is it going to, you know, how's the film going to end? You know, how are they going to, you know, uh, uh, tie this up uh, and get us to our conclusion? And it was just so simple and, and just it's stupid. I mean, you had one person versus the other person and there was just really no thoughts to it at all. It was just like the plan came down to like, OK, I'm going to have this person meet me here and I'm going to beat his ass, you know, something like that. And when that time came. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the hell out of it. But I'm just kind of saying to myself, like, is this the best y'all can do? I mean, there, there was no thought of this at all. Like, you know, I mean, that's just like I, I was really kind of just let down there, you know, because um, let me go ahead and get to my rating time. I was going to rate this an 8.5 out of 10. But now. If I were to rate Superfly, the remake from the 1972 film. If I were to rate Superfly out of a 1 out of 10, I'm going to still give it a, uh, uh, I'm going to give it a 7. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I wasn't going to give it a 7.5, but I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 because that ending just really, uh, it really just um, run me the wrong way. Uh, I mean, it was enjoyable, but it, it, it was just like, come on, y'all, you, you just gave up. Uh, but, you know, hey, it is what it is. But guys, that is just my opinion for the Superfly remake. Have you seen Superfly yet or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. If you don't, that's fine, but you can still subscribe to my channel. Um, you can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All the good stuff is right there at the bottom of the screen. I made it very easy by providing a link to all the good stuff down in the description box um, below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review of Superfly. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Kidavery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.